So our next presenter is, um, sorry, Professor Sung Ho Lee at the Department of Design, who will share his teaching experience in creative design class today. Okay, Professor Lee, will you start? Hi, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's so meaningful to be here when we know the COVID-19 will not go away, say in a year or even longer, and it will repeat, you know, this kind of pandemic will repeat. So I'm really grateful to be here to share my experiences. So um, today I'm invited to talk about my experience in uh, organizing a capstone uh, design project course in our department called Creative Design 1 and 2. Together, they are a one year long graduation project course. And of course, it was our first time to run it fully online thanks to COVID-19. Uh, in addition, I'd like to discuss a critical view on the current credit system in UNIST and more broadly in South Korea. So uh, essentially it's about whether the current system works more as a barrier or enabler for learning in 21st century where the information is abundant and the question is really how to utilize them creatively. Uh, but I'll uh, get back to this point later in my talk. So what is a capstone design project? I, did, I think it is a pinnacle of creative education. Students take which mountain they want to climb, so to speak, be it a research project or a design project, then professors advise on them. That takes a lot of hand-holding and tutoring, and that takes much of our time, right? And also, the topics our students want to explore are diverse. For example, here are some examples of uh, our uh, Creative Design 1 course this year. How to help people with severe acne through an online service. That's a digital service product design, which requires cultural, emotional, and social understanding. Or how about how to improve bus stops in Ulsan by seeing it as a service rather than a physical space. There is a service design project that requires research into people's needs and the city's transportation planning and their uh, budget constraints. Luckily in DHE, we boast 10 design professors that represent a diverse set of expertise. But the question still remains, which professor will tutor which student? So we created a matching system the students wrote project proposals in the beginning of the course with a full list of professors prioritized for their respective topics and interests. Students' names were anonymized and then sent to the professors. The professors read all the proposals and prioritized them in terms of how well they think they can tutor each student in terms of their, in terms of their expertise. Most professors and students have been paired with within their second priorities. Including myself, we promise to our students that we will make ourselves available at least every second week for individual tutoring. What you're seeing here is a record of all tutoring sessions. Most of us met each tutoring student once a week or more. And let's have a closer look. Uh, you can see a lot of A's and B's and C's. This represents the evaluation of each tutoring session. So during each tutoring session, a professor and a student discuss what the goal should be until the next meeting. And then after each meeting, the professors send me the evaluation of progress. And as you can see, A means that the student has done an excellent job and exceeded the goal. B means the goal is met and the student has been diligent. And C means that the progress has been short of what has been agreed upon. This, what I call diligence points, actually constitutes 40% of the student's final grade, which is quite big. But actually, if a student got Bs throughout the semester, he or she will get the full 40 points. Of course, Cs will reduce the total points, but As will get more points. This way, we made it so that the students can make up for their shortcomings later and don't lose their motivation. We also made full use of the online teaching environment. What you're seeing here are the 16 final presentation of our students' design outcomes online YouTube. 
Of course, this method does not offer the, the visceral feeling of real-time presentation and Q&A, but it also comes with a comparative advantage of allowing the audience to take their time and give constructive feedback. To ensure such benefit, I created an evaluation sheet for each student. As you can see here, the students were asked to evaluate each other and give comments to at least eight, eight peers. The, fives were, uh, the five were designated and three were free to choose. We professors did the same, but to all the students. Here are the comments I gave to all 16 students. If it was a real-time presentation offline, such feedback would not have been possible given the limited time, let alone the depth of understanding given the flexibility of watching and re-watching the YouTube video presentations. So this is what we provided to all students at the end of Creative Design 1 course. It begins with professor feedback and continues with peer comments. And students were encouraged to bring this to their tutoring professors to make sense of the comments. Now, this will work as the basis to further their work in the following semester. In fact, we did this twice, once during the midterm and again for the final term, because the students told me that they really benefited from the constructive comments. As such, I iterated the course syllabus using innovative digital tools such as Mentimeter. Here, you're seeing a screenshot of actual voting that happened real time. But it was not a quantitative tool for us, but a way to inquire into students' reasoning. For example, I created an environment where students could suggest different options and express their thoughts freely. This one is a screenshot uh, that uh, that's a digital whiteboard that shows the ideas of students as they type. We were also using a Zoom at the same time. But don't get me wrong, the final decision was mine to make as a responsible person in charge of creating the best possible learning environment for students. Through such feedback, I also organized three special seminar sessions inviting two of recent alumni. One session was about how to prepare the graduation exhibition. The other was about how to archive one's design process. And the final one, by me, was about improving portfolio. Let me sum up what has been discussed thus far. First, we did matching between students and professors through project proposals and anonymous, anonymized uh, prioritization. Second, we tried to create a right incentives for students to carry on their capstone project despite the challenges that occurred due to COVID-19. Third, we tried to improve upon the course content following the principles of action research. However, the course not has only had tailwinds, and this part is about credit system in Korea. At least in UNIST, in most cases, one course has to give three credits, and it should run for the full semester, 16 weeks, and it requires two attendants per week. This, in turn, forces all courses to fit into a box of the same shape and same size. You cannot create a more demanding course or smaller course. Second, attendance works as a basis for credit. Students have to come to the course to gain the credit. They cannot, for example, learn from online videos and pro prove that they have learned and get credit. And now let's compare an ordinary course that fit into that box to the Creative Design 1 course that are presented today. An ordinary course involves one instructor, and the contact session alone would take averagely some 60 hours for the instructor. And of course, it's a 3D credit course. Now, Creative Design 1 course this year involved eight professors as tutors. Together, they have spent more than 120 hours for tutoring. Funny thing is that we could not ask our students to work more on their projects to, to really go deeper by exploring more options, doing more sketches, doing more user study, doing more prototyping. 
Why? Because it's only a three credit course. And our students have so many other courses they need to attend in order to graduate. And this is what I mean by credit system as a barrier for learning. This has long been a challenge for us professors and our students. It does not allow flexible pedagogy that fits our students' needs in 21st century. Now with COVID-19, the need for change is greater than ever. So what is an alternative? We can easily find one from ECTS, the credit system used in all EU states. There, one credit means 27.5 hours of learning, not teaching. This means in practice there could be a course with one credit or 10 credits. And this is a norm in EU universities. There can be a course that runs for a week and gives one credit. But there could be also 10, 12 credit course that is capstone. If we adopt such flexible system in Korea, we can create a programming course, for example. For example, we give, uh, you know, the, the professor gives a bunch of online videos to her students to learn how to code individually. No context session required, and the student only comes to an exam after a certain period of time and to prove that she or he can code. Then get the credit. Then we can make a six, capstone, six credit capstone project, nine credit capstone project, where we can ask our students to invest 20, 30 hours per week to really go deep and be create, creative. Further, this, these self-learning, no-contact courses will free up our time from teaching the basic and repeated content to our students. Instead, we can spend more time talking to them, tutoring them, holding their hands, helping them really blossom, becoming the creative scientists uh, researchers, designers of future that we really want them to be. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lee. Um, it was very informative uh, to get some ideas when it comes to teaching capstone uh, class online, which uh, I didn't really know before. I think it was there was like so much uh, that I learned, and then especially. He talked about you know, some asynchronous interactions that um, he did with students. And it seems like it's a, a capstone class, you need a lot of you know, interactions with students. So actually, finally, he even uh, proposed some, you know, some flexible way of running a class, you know, such as kind of you know, counting credit hours different way. So I think that, that also requires some um, you know, further considerations on, it in, on the administration. Okay, so 